Good evening, folks. It's July 30th, 2020. Number 201, the odometer has turned the, uh, the page, if you will, for my show. And I have a special guest on for you tonight. Uh, Rob Montmini is, to me, the godfather, the upcoming godfather for Massachusetts veterans. Rob, welcome to Oscar Mike Radio. What a pleasure. Thank you. So the reason I say up and coming is is right now in certain circles, Tommy Lyons, who's a Marine veteran, is is kind of still carrying the torch. But in a lot of ways, uh, you're setting this, this new scene in the social media to engage with not only Marine veterans, but also veterans in Massachusetts. So I just kind of want to make that distinction. And I, I love Tommy a lot. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing well, man. Got my dog crying in the background. He's, uh, he's I've, not doing so well. <laughs> I've, I've had I've had dogs and animals be part of the show before, so it, it's no big deal. So, um, for everybody out there, what did you do? You, you served in the military, correct? I did. Yep. From oh, uh, excuse me. Yeah, oh five to 09. Okay. In the Marine Corps. Hurrah. Infantry. Infantry. Um, went through right out of infantry training to uh, recon training. I was there for about eight months. Failed out of that school. Uh, got kicked to the grunts. Got picked up by the sniper team. I got asked if I wanted to join. I said, of course. They had learned where I came from. But I did that and uh, deployed on a Mew. We went around to the Mediterranean, the Gulf of Aden. And then went to sniper school. I failed out of that too. Well, those are hard schools, man. I mean, you didn't, you didn't, you weren't just happy being an O three. You wanted to go all the way. A little bit. That okay. was my hopes and dreams. And then uh, I messed up my shoulder pretty good, and that was kind of the end of my military career. I just kind of rode it out until until the end, and it was time to go home. No, I got you. I got you. So you know, you you transitioned back home. Did did you grow up in Massachusetts? I did. Yep, from okay. Lowell. So from law, so you, you go back home. Now, how was your transition out of the Marine Corps back to Massachusetts? Back to home, excuse me. It, it wasn't that great. You know, I, would, I was still a young kid. I was 21, just out of the military. I was kind of, kind of demoralized from the Marines. Uh, you know, I, I felt like I had a lot of things robbed from me. Like, you know, you know aside from losing friends as, as well, it, you know, I felt like, um, I felt like I got robbed of missing out on college days. So I kind of just got out and partied for a bit. And that got a little out of hand. And so I, uh, I decided to go to school. And GI Bill? Yep. So you actually used your GI Bill? I did, and then some. <laughs> nice. I, uh, I was fortunate. Well, I, when I first got out, I started going to school. But I, I wasted some of it. I won't lie. You know, I... I wasted my time and I wasted the the GI Bill. And so about my junior year of or about my junior year of college, I was about to run out of my GI Bill and I ran into a friend and he's like, you have a disability rating, right? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, dude, voc rehab is the way to go and you'll be all set. So I did that and I completed my master's degree. Oh, congratulations, man. That's awesome. Thank you. So you're doing all that, and, and you know I gotta tell you, I mean, I mean, different different situation. But when when I went to Hawk School, they told us our MOS is going away. We didn't believe it. I mean, after all, why would the Marine Corps send you to a school for a job that was going away? But the Marine Corps did, and I keep wondering if they had had that thing still active, where I went somewhere else, would I even be here right now? So I, I, I get it where you're saying that you felt like you were robbed of the full experience in some, some aspects. And it's tough coming back home. Or In this case, I didn't come home. I moved right here. That's a different story. But you're doing all this. And so you got out in 2009. You, you, you got your master's degree. You're working now. The reason we're talking is you kind of head up, like I said, the, the mass hole veterans slash marines you got the uh, i should i should have my shirt but uh <laughs> these are veterans groups central to massachusetts so 
why did you feel like there was a need for these kinds of groups primarily on social media where, you know, the, the, the normal paradigm is let's go to a, an American Legion, VFW, Marine Corps League, and vets and meet there. What, what got you going this way? Well, it, it kind of almost started by accident. My, a good friend of mine put me in. It, the group was already started, but it was very inactive. There was only about 100 some odd people in there. And uh, so me and my friend came up with one day of, you know, let's, let's start getting guys together. Let's, let's meet up. You know, it's so that 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 took off. It was probably about four or five of us we met up, and uh, it just kind of snowballed from there. I, I started helping guys out more, um, you know, just with general information about veteran benefits. Because getting out, you know, I, I didn't come from a good home, so I I struggled a bit myself, and I had to learn. I had to navigate my own ways through the benefit system and how to utilize the resources that were available. So I figured, you know. Why have somebody else struggle when I've already gone through it? There's really no need to. You know, the plan's already there. So, so that's one of the things I want people to know is there's a lot of people, and you've met them, who, who you know, talk the talk. But, you know, there, there's been times on, on both groups where a call's gone out, whether it's for, you know, what kind of socket to use on my engine or my truck to I've got a real, like, no sh bullshit problem here, guys. And, and I've been a part of that group for what, now, almost three years now, I think? I think so. And the, the response is instantaneous. There's no committee needed. It's like, hey, drop your phone number in a PM and we'll get you the help you need. And it's really cool to see, and I've been involved in just a couple of those, not really heavily as you, but... To, to, to be a part of that is really special. And I think that's missing from a lot of, from a lot of veterans lives. So, you know, how I are you agree. keeping that going? Oh, I don't know. It's, it's really the, the veterans themselves. Yeah. You know, I just kind of steal the ship and everybody else is just participating. They're, they're throwing their own two, two cents in their own expertise in. And, and that's what makes the group so special is that, you know, Everybody's contributing something, whether it be something funny to get somebody give a, give somebody a laugh for the day, or they're you know you no know, shit kicking at the door later that night because somebody is you know having a call for help. Well, I mean, so you know, folks, Rob's being very modest and reticent right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna brag about you for a minute, Rob. <laughs> All right. First of all, you understand people that you have, you know, there's a th over like almost 2,000 of us now in the Mass Hole Marines. 3,000. 3,000. Oh, wow, okay. And there's there's close to the same number in Mass Hole, but that's a little less, I think. Oh, I'm have, sorry. I thought you had taken the, bo the both of them. It's, uh, it's about almost 1,500 between the two of them. Okay, so well, 3,000. 3,000. And... He won't say it, but I will. But getting that those people to kind of move in the same direction is not easy. And, and sometimes, you know, like I said, I, we call him the Godfather for the reason is it is it's very easy to get the, the all of us to go in the same direction. Sometimes you got to be a little bit more, let's just say, emphatic. But he does it, and it works. And it's really interesting because this is not like folks an official group with an office in, in, in Washington, D.C. or in Boston. These are a bunch of people in this state that just agree that certain things for veterans aren't acceptable, certain things are. We're going to have fun doing it. So, you know, Rob does a little bit more than just, you know, referee. <laughs> I, I had to say that, Rob. I had to say that. I'm not, I'm not just, you I know, throwing you some bro love. <laughs> um, but, but I really do mean that because, you know, you see so many people that don't and you get, you get yeah. kind of cynical, right? So I, I, I want to make sure people understand that, 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 that does happen. Like and I, I kind of feel like you mentioned the VFW and American legions and I, I wholeheartedly support them. Um, I, I, they definitely, for our generation, the OIF, OEF generation, they certainly have their drawbacks and flaws. Um, Primarily, they've kind of failed to modernize so much. But, you know, it's because they have done that and social media is now the thing for this generation, it's, it's an easier tool to get to people. And, you know, because those 
organizations fail to modernize. You know, they really lack uh, the crap drawing drawing the crowds into their facilities. And you know, that's not to say all of them, but you know, a lot of them. And you know, why would I go pay you know a couple dollars to go to a kind of a rundown bar when I could go to any bar that I want and just text people and say, hey, let's meet up here. Or say I could post in one of the groups and say, hey, I'm going to go have lunch at this place today. Who wants to come join me? And you'll usually get a couple of people to even join you for lunch. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I, I think there is a, a, a place for the VF, those organizations. I think they've done good work. I think, they're, I think they're understanding that they may have, you know, refused to be adaptable for a long time and now it's they're 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 in trouble in some regards not in trouble is not the right word but they are understanding they've got to change now yeah they've got to change now and, and to your point is, is there's sometimes where it's like hey we're going out on the motorcycles tonight guys we're going to meet at you know foxborough are you in and we just go right or, or you, like you said you know you uh, you know a saturday night i'm like where are these, where are these guys doing they're they're having a good time with no real, you know, hierarchical structure. And it's kind of cool to see that work when we come from uh, a club, if you will, that demands, you know, there's a, there's a head figure and everybody's going to do what the senior guy says in front of them. And, and how does that work where it's just kind of, it's, it's kind of a loose organization, but it's not, it's very well done. Yeah. And so the way, the way we started it and, you know, intend to keep it that way is you know this is a group for you if you're a veteran this is this is your group so if you want to go out and have a bonfire at your house and you want to invite everybody as many people as you can by all means go for it you know you don't need my permission to hang out with people i don't i don't care and i don't want to sense of people like that that's i think that's silly you know so, no i understand but just to get serious here real quick and, and you know, I understand confidentiality and all that, but I, I do kind of want to go through because you and I have both seen where the call goes out for help and you see where, you know, everybody in the group or people in the group will respond to that call for help. What's that like with the, when, when, as we say, the flag goes up and we realize this is serious and some of these have been serious and, and I don't care where you are, we're, we're going to come help you. Kind of just break that down for me because people don't understand that sometimes. Uh, unfortunately, it's almost become routine for myself and a couple others who really work behind the scenes that not many other people see. Um, it's, what happens is, is usually somebody will make contact with them first, whoever sees it first, um, and they'll make contact with that person and start talking to them. Once they, whoever starts talking to them, I find out right away and say, all right, who is this? What's their story? What's going on? And they inform me, okay, if it's serious enough, you know, we'll send somebody over there to actually go sit with them. Or you know, worst case scenario is that we have to, you know, get law enforcement involved, but that's our usually last resort. Right. You know, some guys have, you know, custody battles and stuff going on or something or some things with their work and a police record of, of that situation could really harm them. So we try to mitigate that. Um, but then it's usually involves myself or a couple other individuals and we'll start talking to them and say, what's going on? Oh, well, you know, my wife left me. Well, why? Well, what's going on? Tell me the story. You know, what, you know well, I, I've been drinking a lot. Whoa. All right. You know, that's, that's serious. You know, why, what's going on with that? You know, we're not trained counselors. We're not therapists. We're just trying to get to the bottom of the information or the bottom of the story so that we could really identify the root causes of what's going on and then be able to put that person into the, with the right contacts that they need to be in, whether it be a therapist, therapist whether it be a financial advisor whether it be a lawyer you know it's so we've kind of run the gamut of or veteran benefits maybe they're on maybe they're unemployed you know all right well let's get you to chapter 115 benefits we'll get you that you on disability yet no all right well let's get you stuff going on you know if see if you're applicable and we'll get that ball going and we have plenty of vso that are more than willing to help 
because they could do it throughout the entire state regardless of the towns they're in. So we try to really give people the hand up once we find out what's going on. Yes, and that's what happens. Well, it's been really cool to, to see, I think, the, the best part for me is it's like, you know, a day later, even a month later, it's like, hey, guys, just want to know that, you know, a, a month ago I was in a really bad jam and you guys all came together and helped me out and I'm in a better place now. I'm going to get myself turned around and six months later, hey, I got a house or I got a job or, you know, my girl and I are, are, are rocking steady. So it's just nice to see. It's just nice to see. And, and I think that's in some ways how it has to be regardless of what state you're in. I mean, we, we as veterans got to band together and help our, help ourselves out instead of waiting for somebody else. Right. And that, that's kind of always been our mentality is if, if nobody's going to help us, then who can? Right. We have to do it ourselves. Absolutely. So some things that I kind of want to talk about with regard to our, our state and the state of our veterans um, in Massachusetts um, I think I think I, I'd, I'd be remiss, man, if I didn't get your feeling about the soldiers' home in Holyoke. Um, I, I've gone through and read the entire report. I, I've tried to keep an open mind, and it's just a bad look because you know the guy. Uh, you know, I think it's, he was a captain, Captain Walsh, who got the job. Really, in, in a lot of respects, shouldn't have been there in the first place. And I think I, I think as as I can say that now, having read the report, I, I, I kind of didn't want to talk about it or, or you know get sensational. But after reading the report, that's the read I get off of it. And, and I, I want to do something to make sure it doesn't um, slip into the you know black hole of memories for people. I kind of want to know what you think. Uh, unfortunately, I think that's where it will go. Right now, the spotlight's on it due to the global pandemic and everything that's going on. But once that goes away, it's, you know, veterans are just going to be kicked to the wayside once again. And but it's just unfortunate. It's usually, usually how it goes. Veteran communities usually play it as a pawn and, you know, pretty much for a vote, typically. And sure, there are some that are, you know, that actually do care. But they're hard to come by, in my opinion, from what I've seen. In regards to Holyoke, it, it was just a mismanagement from the top down. And it, it, it's sad to see and it's disheartening. And you and I could both end up there one day. You know, then, well, that, you know. Right, right. That's that, and, and not for nothing, you know, Rob, that's, that's kind of where I'm like, wait a minute. I mean, you know, it's very possible. Not likely, but possible. Yeah. And, and those, you know, regardless of why those men and women were there, they were put there trusted and get taken care of. And they had definitely, if you read some of these guys' service records, you know, weren't, weren't, you know, deserve the best care possible. Yeah. And, you know, my thing is I'm looking at, I just watched the uh, making of a drug scandal about the Massachusetts drug scandal. And I'm like, I agree with you. I think, uh, you know, three, six months from now, once the election cycle is over, this will be put into the dustbin of, of memories and forgotten about. Yeah. It's unfortunate. It's just the way that it goes. Well, I mean, you know, people got replaced. Um, and, you know, speaking of that, you know, there's a lot of names getting thrown around for the next secretary of, um, you know, veteran services for the Commonwealth. Are there, are there any names that come to mind that, um, you know, you think would, would really fit the bill? Absolutely. One of our uh, members, Michael Dejas, hands down one of the most committed veterans, two veterans I've ever seen. You know, there are a, a few solid players who, who know what they're doing, but Michael's one of them that really takes the, case, takes the cake, and he really cares. He does more than me. You know, he's one of our resources that we go to and say, hey, we got this guy. Let's get him set up with, with this or that, you know, within, within the veteran community. And he knows the VA inside and out. He knows all the rules, all the regulations to the state for veterans. You know, and he know he cares. He actually does truly care. You know, I've been on the phone with this kid at 10 o'clock at night, 1 o'clock in the morning. 
hey, we got to get this kid taken care of. Let's go. All right. Got it. Done. He's just amazing. That's who I would like to see. And I know that's who a lot of the, the Mathel vets and Mathel Marines would like to see too. It's, he's helped a lot of people. And he knows what he's doing. He knows the systems. So how, how, how people don't appreciate, can you, how complex, because I'm kind of dabbling into it and I get stuff from the VA and I read through it and it is, that's just a job in itself. How complex is the VA system to actually navigate in your behalf if you don't know what's going on? It's, the, the issue with the VA is that there's, Red tape after red tape. And another thing, too, is uh, it's, it's really been the culture that's been bred within the VA. And that's, well, you know, you can't fire me. You know, but back to uh, the issues, it's, it's all bureaucracy. And it's as well as the pace. And that, that's bred from the culture. And navigating through all of that can be extremely difficult, you know, before coming into the resources that I have now, like, like Michael, I, I was reading the federal regulations on all this stuff. I was pulling it up on Google and reading through all of it. And it's written by lawyers for lawyers. And that's, that's all it is. And it's, it, it's, it gets misinterpreted a lot, you know, down the line and along the way. And you get a lot of, a lot of getting blown off. And the other thing too is that within the VA system, they make it impossible for you to get, even get in contact with anybody. So how can you follow up with people when you don't even have their email or phone number? Well, so I'm having to follow up on something and I'm fine that out. And I just, I just want a living, breathing person to do it. I'm, I'm going to try next week if I, Run into an issue. I might be giving you a call, man, because uh, I, I I submitted this paperwork back in December, and the last I heard in January is it was kicked to the DAV, which you know, um, and that's where it is. So I've got to figure out. So it's 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 I, I I'm trying to get my I was told to get my disability claim updated. Yeah. So I submit the paperwork. They're like, okay, we'll look at it. I got a notification saying it was going to the DAV for review. And, you know, we'll get in contact with you. So I've got to like. From my fight. understanding is you really only go to the DAV if you sent it there for an appeal. No. But that's my understanding. Well, I'm going to find out. This, 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 well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to find out. This is a whole other story. But, uh, you know, I'm like, oh, my God, this is, I just want to go to a website, pull up a portal somewhere and see where my stuff is. And it's not that easy. So. What other challenges, you know, because I talked to veterans in different states, you know, through doing this, and there's common challenges depending upon where you are. A lot of other states have the problem where they don't have a VSO or veteran service officer in each town or, you know, right. one for multiple cities, right? If you have a per Well, that's even, that's even in Massachusetts. Massachusetts is supposed to have a VSO for each town and not all of them do. Really? Yeah. I just got told that, you know, every, every town has one. I was sworn up and down. No, no really. They're supposed to, not all of them. Which town specifically, I'm not sure. But I know there's quite a few that don't. There's some that share jurisdictions due to their proximity and low population volumes and things like that. Um, but, yeah, it, but with other states, um, so we actually have other groups like us that we have partnerships with. Okay. And eventually we're going to merge as one to be more of, have more of a national presence. You know, these groups have already been set up New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, um, North Carolina. You know, they, they, they tap into our resources and we're more than happy to help them. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I mean, I'm not trying to, I'm kind of tooting you guys' horn a little bit, but you know, there, there's not, Three years ago when I joined, there weren't other states doing what Mass Hole Marines and Mass Hole Vets was doing. Uh, they were very disorganized groups or groups, you know, I'm a, I'm a veteran biker group. There's plenty of those. Yeah. But nothing really like this for everybody. Like, like, you know, 
we have all kinds of people in our group and it's great that way to share those experiences. So are you saying that other people are looking at what you're doing and trying to em emulate that? Yeah. So there's, there's a few, um, that we've kind of like stepped in and say, Hey, this is what we do. I want you guys to emulate us. And as you grow and as we grow, you know, later on, we will merge and come together and be a larger organization. And that way we will have more of a national footprint and can stand on a grander scale and advocate for veterans and veteran issues. It's going to be key, man, because, you know, with, with the other, I, I want to say brick and mortar organizations, you know, in the process of adapting, we still need that voice. And, you know, our politicians only understand numbers for votes. That's all they care about, as you, as you mentioned earlier. So a lot of the same issues in Massachusetts that other states have are, are the same in Massachusetts. Is it still about, you know, jobs, education, and benefits, health care? Are those the primary ones that the, the typical bit has to worry about? Or is there something else that, that we got to think about? Well, yeah, but it boils down to the individual. And so you get organizations like the VA and the VFW and American Legion, and it's kind of like a one-size-fits-all type deal. And it's like, well, too bad. This doesn't apply to you. Oh, well. You know, it's, there's, no, there's no tailoring to the individual, which I really feel like we strive in doing. It's, you know, in, in other nonprofits as well, not to, you know, belittle them but i just think it's just what we do differently is that we actually follow up with the individual and create like individual plans for people and say hey you know again like what do you need what's what's the problem and and we do a lot of follow-up with guys too that's why you see guys like six months to a year later like hey i'm doing great because partly because we followed up with them and say hey are you on the track that we've built for you or, or what you know i don't want to see you back sleeping in your car with $20 in your pocket again because then you hit me up and I'm like, dude, come on, I set this up for you. And we learned early on that that was, that was a good probability. And so we try to mitigate that very quickly. And, and just to say too, we try to identify guys who are just getting out so those situations don't happen. Because I found myself in that situation as I was getting out. I had no home to go to. You know, I didn't have a job set up. I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea. And so identifying, you know, active duty members who were getting out within a year to six months and t then talking with them and saying, hey, what is your plan? Because I don't want them to end up like me, how I ended up. Just sleeping on somebody's couch and had no clue what I was doing with my life. Yeah, I don't, I don't think people – appreciate or understand that it happens a lot more than they think they they, they, they oh, yeah. watch while well, they watch the tv shows and movies and think that you know everything's all good all the time and it's not and, and sometimes the battle really begins when you do get out so um and i think you're you think you're on something where it's really the individual veteran and the individual veteran helping each other out that can make that change so good stuff good stuff now to switch it up a little bit um, we got to talk, we got to talk about one of our own who did something very, or, or he didn't do something bad. He just stood there and, and I got to get off my chest, Rob, because it's really bothering me. This whole, that, uh -oh. tick, that tick tock, how, how, how do you, what do you think about that Marine <laughs> standing there at parade rest? Well, his, was it his wife? I could, I didn't even, I didn't even want to find out. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know if it was wife. I hope it was his wife, but then again, I hope not. For I hope his not. Sake. For his sake, doing this dance slash thing, and I'm like, dude, where where is your cojones at? <laughs> Rob, what was that? A staff what NCO, was nonetheless. He wasn't a staff NCO. I'm pretty sure he was. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I thought he was a gunny. He looked awful young to be a gunny, but then again, you know, I am I'm not I'm not young anymore myself, but I mean <laughs> I, I, I know I, I know back when I was in, if some guy had done that, forget it. He's getting hazed, made fun oh, of. Line, let's go. 
every day he shows up every oh, yeah. day but and, and he knew his it. career but she did <laughs> you could see it in his face that he that that soul is like i've lo- i've i've mortgaged my soul for what maybe he wanted a new ps4 i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Well, he definitely doesn't wear the pants when he comes home in that family. I'm like, oh, uh, it's that's what's bothering me. Like, I mean, what a marine! I mean, be a marine and say no. You can't say no. <laughs> you, I I don't know, but I find the, the parody is more hilarious. Well, the, the, it was just brutal, man. I mean, once once the other and once our other services, like you know, the army's like, hey, I had army guys saying, hey, we've never done anything like that. I'm like, yeah. Air Force guys saying, "Hey, what's what's in the Marine Corps water now?" I'm like, you know, just shut up. It's just <laughs> because we all have to own it, Rob. We all have to own it. I don't know. He might be one, the one that we disown, though. It might be a first. He, he might have. He'll have to do something to prove to prove himself like, once again. I don't know. Maybe send him send him back to boot camp or something. Something he's, silly. He's gonna have to like really like Medal of Honor good to to get out of that one. Absolutely. Or maybe I could just haze him. I, I, th- I think I think a mass hole event where he has to like run the gauntlet and, and we baptize him proverbially would, would, would do it. I, I think that's fair. Some good blood stripes here and there. Yeah, yeah. We, we, here's what we could do. We could get him to show up, do the <laughs> thing with him, and do like a pay-per-view and raise oh, money yeah. for the group. I love it. I love oh, it. He, if he did that, I would forgive him. Speaking of money for the group, are you coming camping? When is that? That's August 14th to the 16th. Huh. Hold on a second. I don't think I signed up because, let's see here. i tell you what. I can come Saturday night. Perfect. I don't drink, Rob. That's all right. You know, you don't have to drink. You can just babysit us. Oh, <laughs> I've I've done that before. Every time, right. every time, drunk. Every time, every time we wanted to go to Calexico or Mexicali and dance with the pretty Latina girls, I was the babysitter <laughs> and and bodyguard. I'm like, dude, you're getting ready to get our asses kicked by the federales. Let's go. That's one thing we didn't bring up, though, man, is uh, we do events. You know, we, we go camping. We do golf outings. We do, uh, you know, just general concerts, meetups or concerts. bowling events. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's so far outside the traditional, like, the VFWs and stuff. It's, it's just, that's another thing that makes us different is, or a motorcycle ride. You know, like, like you said, there are a lot of motorcycle groups out there even better motorcycle groups. But, you know, we just do things kind of a little different. And I well, think that's why we have success. And I think that's why we save lives, too, in the way that we do it. So for a veteran in Massachusetts, now what's, what's the rules for joining? There's different rules for Mass Hole Marines and different rules for Mass Hole Veterans. What's the, what's the rule to join up for both of them? Have a Facebook and be a veteran in Mass and New England. So, so you can, if you're uh, in Rhode Island in a Marine, you can join Mass Hole Marines. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just, just, just because I, I'm not from here, Rob. I, I moved here in '99 and didn't know anything about Massachusetts. Didn't under I, I, I Worcester, for example. <laughs> Walked up to the student and said, "Hey, you know, I'm going to Worcester today." He looked at me like you're a fucking retard. But um, Mass Hole. I thought that was kind of a negative thing until I got to know some of you. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty apt, actually. But <laughs> you don't have to be in this state. You got to be in one of the New England states to join. Yep. You got to have a Facebook profile. Yep. And the last thing I would say is, I don't want to hear any excuses. I hear excuses. Well, there's nothing for us to do. No one wants to hang out with me. I'm like, look, dude, if you can play D and D, and there's some other guy in veterans or the marines that will play D D with you yeah oh yeah and and we started creating like subgroups as well um you know our barbell group which is you know people who like to lift or work out or 
exercise in any type of way our yeah. outdoors group for you know the outdoors and whether you like the four wheel fish or hunt or, or whatever rock climb whatever and we got our music group too so it, it, there's certainly a lot of interest there and, and there's something for everybody for pretty much awesome awesome now look i got i got i got i'm always repping i see the patch on your shirt and folks i know i'm, I'm getting mine you know, I got my Oscar Mike radio shirt on, which is pretty fly, but the patch is pretty dope there, Rob. Explain the patch, you know, what, what's on the patch there for Mass Hole Marines? Because that's so this awesome. This is a Mass Hole Marines one. Uh, we got to come up with a really good one for Mass Hole that's, uh, we're, we're kind of going through a few now to try to, so what do we want on shirts? So explain to folks, what's, what's that patch got on it? So it has the state symbol. Okay. Yep. Mass that's Hole it. Marines USMC, the EGA, oh. and the Stars of the States. Awesome. Awesome. And you can and we have a store, right? Yeah. Yeah. CormanUpApparel.com. I'll have that link. Actually, in, excuse me. At CormanUp.com. CormanUp.com. Yep. I will have that link, folks, in the post for this and hashtags for all his stuff. And that's where you get the authentic stuff. If you get it at Target or Marshalls, you're not getting an official uh, shirt. You might get. Well, I might have our attorney look into that one a little exactly, bit. Exactly. Picking exactly. It up at Marshalls. <laughs> so we have the camp out coming up in, in August, man. That's really good. With I think we need that with all the social distancing stuff going on. Anything else going on here in the next couple of months that you want to you know bring up? We got our eyes set on a pig roast, which will be you know everybody bring the kids, family. Uh, we got to work out the details with that. We just got to find it. Our issue is finding a space big enough for it. And then social distancing and things like taking those things into consideration. Um, but we'd like to do that. And we are hoping to just have activities for kids and the family and the wives and the girlfriends and the boyfriends and the husbands and everything else. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and, you know, people can meet each other and just have a good time and for the general public as well. Awesome. If somebody wants to come out and support us, that'd be great. Awesome. Awesome. Well, look, this shouldn't be your last time on Oscar Mike radio, Rob. Uh, it, and it took us a while to get to this point, but now that you're here, it's like <laughs> freaking pretty, it's pretty awesome. And I want to thank you for coming on and representing. Me. Yeah. Oh man, it's great. It's great. Uh, but you know, I really, you know, again, not for not trying to have a bro love moment, but I really do appreciate the things that, that you and people behind the scenes do. Cause I know a lot's going on all the time. And it doesn't happen in a vacuum. And, you know, when you're around somebody who walks his talk and, and you can see the people benefiting from that, it's really powerful, man. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. You know, everybody should – there's no reason why any veteran should struggle. You know, the, the resources are there. The way has been paved for a lot of us. You know, no matter what route you want to go, so I guarantee you somebody else within one of the groups has the resources and has experienced it. And so a lot of these people are willing to mentor and help, help. So, you know, take advantage of it. Don't take advantage of the people, but take advantage of the things that are offered to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I appreciate you having me, man. Well, we are shutting down or as, so we are Oscar Mike and what does <laughs> that means we're on the move, but Rob, I was a hawker in the Marine Corps. So I'm saying mission in flight now. So, I don't even know what that is. So the, 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 the missile would go off the rail. We'd say missile in flight. So I've kind of parodied that and said mission in flight. So whatever the mission is that you're doing, it's in flight. It's in moving. We're, we're, we're throwing that target 40 miles away at the Russian MiG coming in. We're lighting it up. So <laughs> you're going to catch this everywhere, folks. Instagram, Twitter, everywhere. Like our page if you're a veteran. If you're a Marine, check out the Mass Hole Marines. you got to. You gotta, you know, show us your for real, because you know we run across a, a ton of scout snipers before. But make no mistake, Mister Rob can sniff you out if you're a fake. <laughs> well, again, brother, I just thank you so much for coming on, and looking forward to having you back on. And I'll see you August fifteenth. Sounds good, brother. I'll see you then. We are out. <laughs>